Okay, we should be recording now. Um, so hello everyone and welcome to the 15th Med Mentor Monday of 2021. It's crazy how time flies. Um, this panel today is just going to be kind of like an application cycle pep talk. Um, the panelists will be talking about their experiences, um, you know, like while they were preparing to apply and, you know, during the application and like how they tried to stay positive and, you know, if anything came up, how did they overcome it? And um, like, who did they rely on for support? Things like that. Um, so we'll see, um, I think we'll learn a lot today and hopefully we leave this session feeling very excited, <laughs> good vibes. <laughs> Um, for the application cycle ahead. So maybe we can just start off with a quick like intro. Everyone can go around and just say like, we can see your name on the screen, but just say your name, like where you went to undergrad. Um, and then if you like whether or not you took gap years, things like that. And I'll be moderating today, but I can go first. Um, so I'm Martina. I'm, oh, and then also what year you are. I'm an MS2. Um, I'm from Miami, Florida. I went to undergrad out there and I took one gap year. Um, worked as a CNA at a hospital. I can go. Um, hi everyone, my name is Amulia. I am an MS1, I use she, her, hers pronouns. And I grew up in the Bay, um, South Bay area. And I went to school out in Cleveland, Ohio. So big transition. I graduated in May 2021, so I came straight through, um, and now I'm really enjoying my first year of med school. I can go next. I'm Candice, she, her, hers. I am an MS1. I spent did my high school um, near Stanford, but I ended up going to Berkeley for my undergrad, so we're not going to talk about, talk about the tension there. <laughs> um, and I went straight through and I'm part of the MD PhD program here at UCLA at DGSOM. I can go next. I'm Juhi, she, her pronouns, MS2, um, grew up in Birmingham, Alabama and went to college there and also went straight through. Um, so graduated in 2020. Hi everyone, I'm Keely. I use she, her pronouns. I'm from Tucson, Arizona, and I went to the University of Arizona. Um, I'm an MS2, and I also went straight through, so um, all of us didn't take any gap years, but if, um, well, except for Martina, so if you have any questions about, about that, definitely direct those at her, although a lot of us have a lot of friends who did take um, years of opportunity, so we can definitely kind of try and offer some input on that. Um, yeah, excited to uh, chat with you guys tonight. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, I can't believe no one else here has taken at least one gap year. Um, I don't think this is very representative, like Keely said. Like, I think it's pretty evenly split between people who take years off and go straight through. So yeah, that's interesting. Um, but I, okay. I might even say there's more people that have taken time off. So I think this is like, a rare occurrence. Yeah, I think it's a definitely a more common thing, um, multiple years too, um, but interesting. Okay, um, so yeah, maybe we can go ahead and get started. Um, so just to start off, um, did you, thinking back to when you were applying, preparing everything, did you have a strong support system when you were applying or did you have people that you could turn to for support or help? You know, how who did you rely on during this time? I can go first. So I am the first one in my family and including extended family to ever apply to medical school. So in that sense, I didn't really have support from people in my immediate family, but like to walk me through the process or like know what to do or even who to talk to. Um, but I did make a lot of friends and so this is kind of like why I enjoy med mentors, right? Because that's kind of like how I got my support system. I mean, my family, they were great for emotional support, but like not knowing what like what the AMC application looked like or, you know, all these different things was definitely stressful. And having just looking at all the online resources, listening to other people talk, people that have been through the process, that was the biggest strength, I think, for my support system.
Yeah, I mean, Candace and I both did this cycle um, virtually, like you guys are, and um, I think we made the decision to apply sort of early on in the pandemic, and a lot of the friends that um, I had been sort of pre-meds with, we were all planning to apply, um, a lot of us made different decisions about how and when to apply, so ultimately I um, didn't know a ton of people applying the way I thought I would. Um, so the support system that I thought I had was a little bit skinnier, um, ended up being a little skinnier. But I think that it's important to also have support system um, like sort of outside of medicine, um, like things that you can do and people that you can talk to who aren't going through this so that they can sort of take you out of this world for a little bit. Um, I think inevitably you know when people are in the cycle like our our tricky tricky brains really like to compare um and that's never super healthy so it's i i always think it's really important to cultivate those um support systems outside of you know your pre-med world um, and outside of medicine for that reason i think the way you put it candace was like very interesting of like there's the support system of like actually going, actually telling you how to apply and helping you in that process. And then there's like the emotional support. And when I first heard the question, I thought more about like the emotional support aspect of it. But for me, I also didn't, like my family members really couldn't help with like reading my essays or telling me like what experiences to put on the AMCAS or things like that. But I had some really great mentors who were like students one or two years older than me um, that I knew like from the honors college that really like broke it down for me. And I I think like that's part of why I wanted to be in med mentors is to like provide that mentorship for others. So definitely like shameless plug for med mentors in that capacity because it was super helpful. Um, but then on the emotional side, I only really like talked about the that process with like my non pre-med friends and I established boundaries with my pre-med friends where we like mutually agreed we weren't going to talk about like where we were applying um where we got accepted or interviews or anything like that and at the end of the year we would just like tell each other what we're going to be doing like the next year like where we're going to be going to medical school or whether we're taking a gap year or anything like that and that helped me a lot because then there was like less examples of people. There were fewer examples of people to compare myself to and like have those negative thoughts um, and really just focus on myself. Um, I think my application cycle, although it was extremely stressful, is definitely totally different than the ones that came after me. So you know, me speaking to kind of what got me through mine is like inherently going to be different than um, everyone who applied, you know, during the pandemic, which I can't even imagine. So kudos to all of you for that, because that's something I can't even, you know, experience or imagine going through. Um, but for me personally, I think I relied a lot on my family. I'm also the first in my family to go to medical school and my parents are not in medicine, although they were extremely, extremely supportive of me. They were the ones who actually like coached me on my interviews. They actually went to my interviews with me just for emotional support. They read my application essays. I actually, I don't think I went to it like a single, I wouldn't recommend this. I didn't go to like a practice interview. I just, I did everything with my parents because they were just saints, honestly. And I would not be here without their support. Um, so I was very lucky to have them kind of by my side throughout the whole thing. And they're the ones who like kept me going. Um, but also I had a lot of friends who um, were applying to other specialties like dentistry or farm um, and others who actually weren't planning on going to medical school, but they knew that I was applying and it was really nice to kind of have that community, all of us rooting for each other, um, which was really encouraging and you know I don't know anything about the dental application or farm and they didn't really know much about medicine but you know, we could all just be there for each other and kind of cheering each other on. So um, that also was really nice. And then I had wonderful mentors, like everyone has mentioned before, and their experiences who I could always meet with and like ask for advice and just chat with. And so it was really nice to kind of have them throughout the journey as well.
Yeah, so most of you actually began answering the next question I was going to ask, um, but I'll ask it just in case anyone wants to add anything else. It was, um, do you have any advice on prioritizing mental health and well-being throughout the application cycle, especially when applying at the same time as other friends? And then maybe something we didn't talk about, but I don't know if it'll be applicable, is how did you deal with pressure from family? You know, like asking, like, when are you going to med school? Is it already over? Where are you going? <laughs> yeah, so just to jump start this one, um, it is going to be stressful. So I will say always, always prioritize your mental health <laughs> because this is a long and arduous process. Um, and that may sound scary, but it's kind of, you, it's just kind of something that you have to go through. And I'm sure everyone that's been here has like been through one weeder class or two. Um, and so, I think ma mainly it's just listen to your body, listen to your mind. If you are stressed out and you can't focus on sitting down and writing that essay, don't spend another two hours sitting there writing that essay because that's not going to help you in the short term or the long term. Um, don't compare yourselves to other people in the cycle either. Um, I had, so obviously my cycle is different because, like Amelia mentioned, we were, did it online. But even beyond that, um, I like didn't get into any schools until like the wait list started opening up. So I had an entire cycle where I was just comparing myself to other people being like, okay, so-and-so got an interview. So-and-so got a secondary. Where's my secondary? Where's my interview? And just being so absolutely stressed that like I wasn't going to make it to the other side. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel. If you put yourself first, prioritize what you need to prioritize, everything will happen the way it's supposed to and it's gonna be okay. That being said, sometimes application cycles are gonna be crapshoots, so never let that affect your worth, like your self-worth. That is absolutely not correlated to who you are as a person, what you do, or anything like that. So if you do get something that, fe like a letter or an email or something that feels disappointing, take it with a grain of salt and just blow by it because you've got so much going for you. There's so much else that you can do. Do not stop there. <laughs> Keep fighting the good fight. That was super well said, Candace. And I think to add on to that, like you're pretty much like putting your whole life into this application that admissions committees will spend like minutes on if like if that. And so the like if you don't get an interview or you don't get an acceptance, like it could be so random as like the person reading your application was in a bad mood that day, or they had just read like 200 others and like didn't pay attention as well. So it, it truly has nothing to do with your worth. And that's important to like separate. I talked already about like having boundaries with my friend, like my friends who were also applying at that time. Um, I also didn't go on like Reddit or Student Doctor Network. Um, I stayed far away from those during the cycle. And another thing that's like really helped me was starting the process as early as, po as possible. Um, because like, especially working on the secondary essays, there, if you're applying to a lot of places, you start getting the secondaries back around the same time. It can be a lot to, to deal with at that time. So trying to pre-write those and spread it out helped a lot. Um, and then also I used my application as a way to like hype myself up. Like I looked at it as like a list of my, of things that I was proud that I did. And that made, that helped like my sense of self during a process that can be, that can like break, make you feel like broken down. I think, you know, throughout our journeys, like in medicine, I've learned more and more how important self-care is and taking the time to really do things that honor yourself and are good for your mental health and well-being and learning how to take breaks and um, just do the things that you enjoy and that relax you. And it's definitely something I was not 
good at when I was in undergrad and applying to med school. Um, but now that I'm here, I've really tried to prioritize that. And I think that's something that if you can start doing early um, is really important. Um, so just make sure to take the time for yourself, do things that you enjoy, don't, don't let those go, um, especially when you're in such a stressful time. Um, and also, you know, don't do the comparison game, which is so easy to fall into that trap. And it's honestly easier said than done. Um, but also just like try talking to yourself as if you were talking to your best friend. You know, like you, there's things that you would say to your best friend that you should be telling yourself because um, we should all be like kind to ourselves and lift each other up and stuff like that. So just keep that in mind and, and give yourself grace as you go through this process. Yeah, I think everybody has really hit the nail on the head here. Um, I also just wanted to talk a little bit about boundary setting with family. Um, so some of us, you know, may use our family as a support and some of, for some of us, you know, family is a stressor. So, you know, it's, it's okay either way. Um, and it's okay to, you know, even if your family is a support to set boundaries with them and it's okay, even if your family is a stressor to share with them, but you decide, you know, where your boundary is. If sharing your progress with your family is, you know, your way to hype yourself up, you know, feel free to do it. Sometimes that can be really, um, you know, helpful to sort of share the burden and be like, this is what I'm worried about. And your family will be like, no, you're, you got this. Or it's okay to be like, you know, I'm in the cycle. I'll let you know when I'm ready. Um, please, you know, I'll, I'll approach you or I'll let you know. Um, and it's okay to tell them that they don't need to ask you about it until you're ready to share. So both of those things are okay. And, um, you know, if you ever want to chat about it, I, we also do just another plug for med mentors, but like peer advising, if you ever do have a, a situation that you don't know how to navigate and you want to figure it out, you know, we, I'm sure all of us have gone through our own versions of stressful encounters and happy encounters. And we're happy to chat with you if you have like an individual situation too. Very beautifully put, all of you. <laughs> Very um, nice advice. I wish I had heard when I was applying. Um, okay, so definitely when you're putting together your application, there's a lot of moving parts. You know, you're waiting on letters from people, you're waiting on transcripts from your school. Um, did you face any like setbacks or obstacles when you were putting your application together, maybe through any of these things? And if so, how did you remain positive and optimistic it's kind of a vague question but <laughs> yeah okay I can take this one so nothing went wrong thankfully but I had um you know my entire primary application ready to go and set up and I had a composite letter sent for my letters of recommendation so my um my pre-med advisor needed to receive um, a letter of recommendation from one of my letter writers before he could, you know, submit my, my actual composite letter to my schools. Um, and one of my letter writers was having an emergency that I, like, you know, like a family emergency that, you know, I was not privy to, obviously, and had no idea about, and was a little bit late in sending, sending that, which was really stressful for me, and I can only imagine much more stressful for him, but, um, that was a stressful situation. You know, it's not easy. These things are sort of out of your control and they happen. Um, and thankfully, you know, eventually I was able to get that letter out and my application was fine. But um, I remember really feeling like it was going to impact my ability to, you know, get verified on time, get my secondaries on time, things like that. So I, I know that stress. And if that's happened to you, you know, that stress and it's not easy there. It's totally out of your control. So like, what do you do? Right. Um, a couple of things that are important um, that we may be beyond the time for, uh, given that it's, you know, end of August, but before, before um, you, um, sort of ask your letter writer or before you agree to up, upon your letter writers, you should have conversations with them about, you know, sort of shared expectations. I mean, whenever you work with somebody, it's important to, to have that. So, you know, being clear about deadlines, being clear about information and being clear about what you need based on the timeline of your own application, it's important. And so, um, 
I was thankfully in able to get in contact with with this letter writer because we had established that line of connection and communication. He was also a trusted mentor. So, um, you know, eventually I was able to contact him and we were able to work out, you know, what was going on and like ex extensions and things like that. Um, so my the work that I had and the connection that I had with this mentor previously really helped me out. And then also, and I know this is difficult, but there's no better answer. You just got to let it go. Things are going to happen when they happen. Um, it's all, it's going to work out. And if it doesn't work out, you're going to try again because this is your dream. So, you know, it's, it just sort of is what it is. And you freaking out is not going to help matters. So, you know, think about those adversity essays and think about like all of those stress coping techniques that you want to tell the admissions committee you have, employ those, you know, use those and, um, like sit back and relax and it's going to be okay because you've made it this far. Just to jump on that, like absolutely um, talk to people. Do not be afraid to reach out. It doesn't matter if it's about, you know, a recommendation letter that you haven't heard back from the recommender about, or maybe, you know, maybe you sent out a request for a transcript and it hasn't shown up that it's been received yet. It doesn't, it doesn't matter which part of the process, even if it's just asking someone like, hey, can you read over my essay? This is an okay time to take space. This is an okay time for you to ask for things, to ask for help, to reach out because it takes a village. No one goes through this process alone and it's fine. <laughs> so it's okay to, you know, to ask for things, even if it's like, oh God, I need to turn around the secondary and I have a bajillion of other ones. I don't know if I can do my best right now. Email the school. It doesn't hurt to ask. The worst possible they could think that they could say is exactly what you already know is that there is a deadline. But if you reach out, you talk to them about their, your circumstance, sometimes you can get extensions. Sometimes there's options that you didn't even know existed. So don't be able, don't like, don't be afraid to just like open your mouth and ask and like grab and take whatever you can get <laughs> um, because it really is a process that you know there's a lot of resources out there and sometimes we don't know where they all are but somebody knows so just don't be afraid to ask okay um, so how did you hype yourself up before an interview? Do you have any advice for um, avoiding imposter syndrome when interviewing and, you know, meeting all these other amazing people interviewing? <laughs> um, so if you've been on one of these Med Mentor Mondays, you've heard me say this because I feel like I've used this analogy before, but if you're going on an interview, you're going on a date where you know the other person already likes you. So, you know, feel, you know, feel excited, be proud because they selected you because they like your application. Um, so it's really easy to feel imposter syndrome. I'd be completely lying to you if I told you that like I was immune um, because I felt it for sure. Um, but you're going to look stronger on your interview if you take strength from the people you're around. Like look at your look at the people who are interviewing with you and just know that you're on the same playing field. And you know, the school likes you just as much as they like anybody else in that room. And you are you are in the room, you know, and that is an exciting thing that I don't think we give ourselves enough credit for. You know, when everybody else is talking about you know, their fun facts, which are like humble brags, you know, feel, just feel proud that you are a part of this, um, this group of people and you are, you are also that cool. You know, there's lots of different ways to hype yourself up for that interview, but I think just taking a step back and appreciating the process and understanding that you have made it is, is really, really important. And also, you know, um, 
like Juhi said, just take a look at your application. It is your hype list, like Candace put in the chat, and just feel proud. Um, the more you can feel um, excited about what you've done, um, the more the, the more clarity you'll have about the excitement for what's to come. And that will show through in your applications, in your secondaries, in your interviews. It'll show through in your conversations with admissions. Um, and that's what these people want to see. So just lean in. Kabuli is absolutely right. Like interviews, it's kind of, okay. You can call it a date. You know, I always approached it like you're meeting an old friend. Like you don't want to be too friendly, but they've missed out on a lot and you need to catch them up. And I think when you would approach it as a conversation instead of like an interrogation, I think it comes out much better for everybody involved. Uh, mostly because you shouldn't be looking at it as if like someone is, you know, evaluating you from like on high. Like Amelia said, if you get that interview, they want you. They saw something in your application that made them interested, which means you're you're good. Anyone that goes to an interview is qualified to be there, right? Like on paper. Now it's just about who you are as a person. And I think that doesn't get across in the traditional interview setting, but it does get across in a conversational setting, right? Like talking about what you're interested, talking about the things that you've done, talking about the things that you're excited about and what makes you crazy about medicine. <laughs> and I think, sorry, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm so sorry, guys. But I think also at the same time, you will definitely feel imposter syndrome, just like Amelia said but know that everybody else is feeling it too. No, no one does not feel it. Everyone is exactly feeling the same thing where they're like, was this a fluke? Am I supposed to be here? I am not as good as everyone else. Everyone feels that. It doesn't matter. We're in med school and I can still tell you that every single day I'm like, am I really supposed to be here? Like, are you sure no one made a mistake? Um, so don't let that stop you. Just kind of tuck that in a nice little box, put it in the back of your head and be like, good boy, stay. And then just go into it as if you're talking to an old friend, you know, or talking to a family member that you haven't seen in a long time. Just, they're a person like you. They have struggles, they have a complex life, they have ups and downs. They are not an omnipotent like Wizard of Oz that just does everything right. So if you approach it like that, I think it makes it a lot less stressful, at least it did for me. But do do mock interviews. It helps you figure out like what kind of curveballs that people might throw. That's that um, I really did appreciate having people do that with me. And I'm also random plug. I'm also happy to do those with other people like in this group or not in, like this group. If that's something that'll help you guys just offering. I think approaching it like a conversation is the way to go for sure. So for me, and I'm sure this looks different for virtual interviews versus in-person interviews. My interviews were all in person and I was most nervous about like getting psyched out by other people um, who were interviewing. And I actually was surprised that that didn't really happen because I always found like very down to earth people when I was interviewing. Um, and particularly because I attended a, like a state school for college, I always found the other state school kids and we would just talk. And that says like nothing about private schools. I also talked to some very cool people from private schools, but I felt like I always felt like comfort in other people who had like some similar experiences to me in terms of like where they went to college. And that was pretty cool. And then when when like talking with other people you don't have to like compare your applications at all you can be like what was it like growing up in Wisconsin and go from there and like wish each other good luck hang out in the city um or like also do that virtually but also you don't have to like talk to other people too there is one interview in particular where like I was getting annoyed at like the number of Fulbright scholars around me and so I just like put in my headphones I had made myself a hype playlist and I would I just listened to that and then like took a little walk outside came back in someone asked me what I was listening to showed them my playlist it was great um and that was very helpful and also like identifying some trusted like friends or family members or people in your support system 
that like knew that my interviews were coming up who would like wish me good luck and check in and things like that were also helpful for those moments where I had doubt and I needed like external validation kind of going into it. But yeah, those are just some things I wanted to add. Yeah, totally agree with what everyone has said. And they all offered such wonderful advice that, that I would echo as well. Um, in terms of like leading up to the interview and being nervous about it, that's inevitable. Um, I would say just find something that works for you to kind of calm your nerves like the night before, the day before. Um, as I mentioned, my mom went with me on all of my interviews. So um, the night before I had my interview, her and I would walk to the med school campus and we'd walk around the campus. Um, we'd also like go to dinner. We'd walk around the campus. I'd get to see what it was like before I went there the next day. And it just helped calm me a little bit. Like I could see where I was going to go the next day. I could envision myself being there. It just was a good exercise for me to get into the right headspace for the next day. Um, so find something that works for you that just kind of helps you relax and, and get into the right, into the right mode. Um, in terms of going to the actual interview itself, what uh, imposter syndrome is 100% a thing like that everybody experiences just like everyone else has said um, but it's important to just trust in you and trust in your story and know that everybody there just wants to get to know you as a person as a wonderful very qualified human being that has a very interesting story to tell and that's really what everybody wants to hear and so just share what you're passionate about, share what you're interested in. A lot of my interviews, I actually didn't even talk about medicine. I talked about something I wrote for my hobby on my application. And so, which was like completely unrelated to anything medical um, at all. So like people just want to get to know you and that's the fun part about interviews. So don't be afraid to have that conversation and, you know, be vulnerable, share your story, share who you are. Um, and it should flow easily because, you know, it's who you are and, um, yeah. So just trust, trust in that and trust in that process. Absolutely agree with everyone, everything everyone said and what Kaylee said was especially important. Like let it flow. Sometimes interviews will not flow and that's not going to be your fault because <laughs> sometimes it's just going to be awkward. Don't hold on to that. Every interview is you start afresh, you start new and you and now that it's online, <laughs> at least for the people that are doing the cycle online, know that you can step away at any time, like in between an interview. If you want to turn off your camera and scream into a pillow, do it. If you want to like just run outside and like, I don't know, scream into the outside and run back. That's OK. Do it. Um, but once it goes back in person, like do a walk, like just do a walk, take a walk, you know, listen to some music talk to somebody else. Again, everyone is feeling all the same emotions. No one's walking in there like, I'm going to get in. I'm going to be fine. And if they are, they're hiding something because for sure they have something else going on there. Um, but just treat it as if you would any other conversation. That's like the biggest takeaway I had. Because when I treated it like someone was trying to get particular information from me, like, oh, like, what did you do during this year? What did you do during your research? Blah, blah, blah. It ended up for me sounding more like I was just this script that was rambling off stuff from my application. And that's not what they want from you. Because if they wanted to hear about your application, they would have just read it, assuming they hopefully did. But they want something more. So whether that's the art that you do, if you sing, if you like go and volunteer at a dog rescue, that's all stuff that they want to know too, because that's what makes you a real person and not just numbers on a page. I just wanted to add one more thing. Sorry, Martina. Going back to the date analogy, interviews are not just about the school trying to see if like you're a good fit. It's also a great time for you to see if the school is a good fit at least from the information you get from the interview, um, really pay attention to that. And like, maybe it'll show up in like the interviewer and not really like coming across well, or maybe it will be like part of the tour, but definitely pay attention to like how you feel during that day and reflect on that because that will be really important as well. 
and like for a place where you're going to be for like at least four years it's important for you to like try and get a sense of whether you will be for the most part like happy there or like at least okay You got to share that playlist with us, Juhi, the hype playlist. <laughs> I definitely need it some mornings. Um, okay, um, next question. Do you have any advice for staying positive and moving on after a waitlist offer, a rejection, or just a rough interview? I think we already started talking about the rough interview, but how do you move on after, you know, one of these maybe inevitable things? I can start because I definitely had gone through the whole waitlist thing. So like I mentioned earlier, um, I did not get a single acceptance throughout the entire cycle. So I was just holding on from like, I don't know, when we started preparing your primaries in like the May of the year before until the May of the next year. I was like, oh God, this is not happening for me. Um, but what I will say I learned from that is being rejected, it kind of sucks. But remember that it's literally just something that somebody put down on a piece of paper. It has no weight on who you are, what you've done. It never, ever will take away from any of the things that you've accomplished and will accomplish. So do not let it slow you down. At some point, you'll just open up the email and be like, ah, another one. <laughs> but you'll be fine. <laughs> and as I can hopefully happily tell you that um, it does work out. So waitlists do move. There are things that happen a lot. So don't give up hope, keep trying, be persistent. And sometimes some schools, okay, this is not like recommended, but some schools will let you like appeal. So I don't recommend this because then you can get in down like a very deep hole, but just know that it's gonna be okay no matter what. And I also know people that have applied multiple cycles and they still end up doing what they love. It's fine. They just took a couple more years to figure out what they wanted to do. And that's okay. Something that helped me for like an awkward interview that, or like rejections or things like that was like, telling my friends what happened and kind of hearing their reaction because I think like a lot of it I would internalize and say like oh it's my fault it was so awkward but then telling someone else and hearing their perspective they're like they asked you that what and like it it helped me like be able to laugh about it instead of like feeling awkward or embarrassed or upset and kind of like move forward and also think like, okay, like maybe it wasn't a good fit or like maybe it's it's not like the end of the world. And it doesn't, it doesn't predict that anything about the next interviews to come. So that was something that helped me, but also like part of my coping style when, when it comes to like stressful events is like, talking to other people about it that I trust. So that will like look different for, for everyone, but that's something I did that helped. I think it's important to note that not every school is gonna be a good fit for you. So the ones that maybe you don't get invited to interview or you don't get an acceptance, it may not seem like it at the time, but it's probably a blessing in disguise, honestly, because you really have to factor in a lot of things when you choose what school to go to. And I mean, a lot of them are not gonna have maybe everything that you want. Um, and so, you know, don't take it personally, um, just know the nature of the whole process and how honestly, a lot of times it's like a shot in the dark anyway. And so just recognizing that and knowing that and knowing that it has nothing to do with your worth is really, really important. And then also just kind of thinking like, oh, well maybe, you know, this school isn't the right path for me, but I'm gonna keep trying until I get to the one that is. 
um, because you're going to be at the school for four years. You really want it to be a good fit in terms of like the people, the programs, if you want to get involved in research, the research that's there. So, you know, it's important to really take a lot of time to, to look at that as well. And we have talked about this um, before, like taking taking strength from your own application. Um, but it, it's especially important here because, um, like everyone said, rejection is not uh, a reflection of, of your worth. Um, and in fact, if you can see the strength of your own application, if you can take pride in the activities that you participated in, and hopefully you do have pride in, in those activities and your leadership and your creativity um, and your passion for advocacy, whatever it may be, um, hopefully you do have pride in that. You should really lean into that maybe that medical school was not ready for you. And that's okay, because you, this is your dream and you're, you are going to thrive with, where you get, like where you need to thrive and where you get to thrive and it will happen for you. And uh, like everybody said, like if they say no, it was probably a bad fit um, or, you know, maybe they weren't ready. And if you have to apply the next cycle, um, bring those same strengths and like capitalize on on everything that is going for you you know highlight your your strengths your growth um, and if, if you can only do that by by doing some really intentional self-care um, and and self-love and really believing that you do have the strength and you do have the the activities on your resume and you do have the creativity and the leadership um, so just if you remember that, um, and if you take strength from that, uh, you'll make it, you'll make it through, even if it's a, you know, a bad outcome. I just want to highlight this point that like Keely, Juhi, Amelia, have, Amelia have already said, uh, sometimes the school is just not going to be right for you. <laughs> and you will feel that when you talk to the people at the school, and this is going to be harder if you're doing it online. Um, because sometimes just actually like visiting the school, walking around being like, I don't really like these people, <laughs> or I don't really like this environment or this weather. Those are things that should factor into your decision. And those are things that if you feel like a red flag signal going off in your chest or your head or whatever, don't push that aside. It's not worth it because this is also a choice that you're making about where you're going to go for your medical education and that's going to be four years or more, depending on the program that you're into, that you get into. Um, so that's a huge part of your life. Don't take that lightly. If you have a bad experience with the interviewer, talk to other people. If you have bad experiences with all of them, then this is probably telling you something. Or if you hear of policies at the school that you don't like, or maybe parts of the curriculum that you don't jive with. These are all things to be taking note of. Because at the end of the day, it is actually a two-way interview, even if it doesn't feel like it. Yeah. Yes, very strong points. Um, so we actually got some questions in the RSVP form. So I'm just going to um, choose some because I don't think we'll have time to go through all of them. Um, so this one. See, even though there was more focus on following the pre-med path, were there other enjoyable things that you were able to do, um, I guess, like while you were applying? Um, in other words, like what are some of the things that you like to do for fun? <laughs> Not checking the application portal every two seconds. <laughs> Be outside. Go to, if you have access to a beach, go to the beach. If you have access to hikes, go to hike. If you don't have access to any of that, go on a walk. Um, being outside, at least for me, really helped me put into perspective everything I was doing. Sometimes it feel, felt like the world was ending. Sometimes it felt like the weight of the world was going to crash down on me. Sometimes it felt like I just wanted to sit and cry. But like being outside, seeing living things that like is not the people that you're living with sometimes helps. And it makes you really, really feel like some like that you put everything in perspective. The sun is still gonna rise tomorrow. It's still gonna set. You're gonna have a good time. It's gonna be okay. Just remember to do things that keep your mind, body, and soul running in place, happy. 
Yeah, I think the things you already like to do, you'll really like bank on those during the application cycle. So for me, that was like also being outside um, and like hanging out with my friends, just like ordering pizza and playing games, going to a restaurant, things like that were very nice. Um, and all like then when when I was at interviews, because I was like traveling for them, I would like call my friends when I was there um, and also like try and explore the city. So I hope that like if hopefully in-person interviews will come back and you'll get to do that because it really was like a fun trip to go explore. And like, even if I never come back to the city, even if the interview's stressful, at least I can like check out a new ice cream shop or something. Yeah, um, it was the pandemic. So a lot of the things that I normally would have done to sort of keep myself entertained and keep my mind off things, I didn't really have access to. But I will say that, um, you know, leaning on your support structure, um, the people you love and the people who are, are there for you, that's going to be really important. So even if I couldn't see all of my friends, um, you know, getting on Zooms with them or just debriefing like how a particular essay was going or how an interview went or what I was worried about um, or talking about, you know, what they're up to so that I don't have to think about this godforsaken cycle. Um, so, you know, things like that. Um, I developed many hobbies. I'm an avid crocheter and I really love it. So, you know, pick something up, do something for fun, do something for you. Um, I feel like that's fairly obvious, but it's a lot harder when you're in it to tell yourself that it's okay to take a break. So uh, here, this is your sign. Take a break, drink some water, pick up a hobby, do something. The majority of my cycle was pre-COVID. So I was actually able to travel a lot. Um, my best friend and I took a trip to London um, for spring break. So I really tried to like do all the things like before I graduated and before going to med school. Um, I took up a new hobby, which was baking. I did a lot of that. <laughs> um, and I still do it now in med school. So um, yeah, just take the time to do things that you really enjoy, um, especially like before going to med school too, because your time will be a lot different once you get here. <laughs> so just make sure to take time for you. I feel like um, it's important to say this because we know it, but we don't say it. You like life doesn't stop. Like life keeps going, and you're gonna you're gonna be a pre med one day, and then all of a sudden you're gonna be a med student, and like life doesn't stop. You don't become a different person in med school, so it's important. And I think like, and I know this, and I've given this advice before, but I think I've been living it. Like you, all the same, you know. You, stress behaviors and all the same, um, you know, your ability to deal with stress, you know, it just, it's the same. So if you build these habits now of taking care of yourself and being intentional about your boundaries and being intentional about your self-care, like it's, it sounds so like, um, it, it might sound obvious to you now, but I'm telling you, like you, you have to do it and build those habits because those are the habits you're going to bring with you into actual med school when you know you really don't have time you know um to do anything other than be kind to yourself so um start you should start now it's not easy um, I know it, it can be difficult but but you'll need it even if it's hard so you should just do it just do it Yeah, I completely agree. Try to learn how to cook before you start if you don't already know how to do that. Um, otherwise, you might find yourself getting like food takeout all the time. Um, <laughs> so yeah, definitely learn how to take care of yourself in this time um, before you potentially start medical school. Um, to answer this question, I actually, do so donuts are my weakness um, and I made it a point. This is like one of the nice things about interviewing in person that I hope you all get to experience in the near future, but I got to try a donut place everywhere I want. And I'm very happy to say I was able to try Stan's Donuts here in Westwood before it closed. <laughs> it was pretty good. I had um, a Bruin or UCLA donut with like blue and yellow sprinkles. It was really good. Um, 
I've been waiting on Primo's donuts to open up here for literally months. And I know, and they're taking a while, but it's okay, I'll be in Westwood a little while longer. So I'm, I'm very looking forward to um, more donuts in Westwood soon. There's a lot of boba though here, so it's really nice. Um, okay, let me see if there's another question. Um, I guess we already kind of talked about this, but um, like, how do you move away from other people's comments on your path and deal with like constructive feedback on your application? That might be the last question we do before we wrap up. So just really quick, everyone is always gonna have opinions. <laughs> um, everyone's gonna have opinions and everyone's gonna have thoughts about the way you should do things and take it always with a very heavy grain of, big grain of salt because this is your path. This is your journey. Don't let someone else rewrite it for you. This is, goes especially true. If, this is especially true for essays. Um, it's always good to get another pair of eyes or multiple on it. But again, everyone has opinions. And if you try to please everyone, you end up you're going to be ending up telling someone else's story and not your story. So stick to who you are. Tell your story. And yes, there will be times when it hurts to hear feedback. Um, especially me and my ego, that's always gonna <laughs> sting a little, but take it with a grain of salt. Know that people want the best for you, um, I hope, <laughs> but that, you know, you've gone, you've made it this far and you have so, so much more things to do and to, so many places to go. So keep the ball rolling. Sometimes things will be helpful, sometimes they will be not. And it's okay for people's advice to not be helpful. Pick and choose. This is a buffet. Take what you want, leave what you don't. That's all I got. I think it's so important to find your village and then keep them throughout the entire process. And you want to find those people who are really there for you, there to listen to you, there to offer you advice that is helpful and just be emotional uh, support for you throughout this process and it's also kind of like Candace was alluding to it can be very detrimental to have too many cooks in the kitchen per se um, because it really does start to interfere with what you're trying to convey and the stories you're trying to tell about yourself because nobody can tell your story but you so you really want to find the people that you feel like you can confide in and trust and also who know you very well to be able to give you the advice that is going to actually be beneficial to you throughout this process. So take the time to find those people because it's really, really important. Um, and like Candace was saying, leave the rest because it's probably not productive. So Okay, um, so does anyone just have any like final words of encouragement or like positive vibes for our attendees and our viewers who may be preparing to apply next year or already applying this year? Positive vibes, always. <laughs> Sorry, Judy. Um, but everyone's gonna be fine. Everyone's gonna do great. We all believe in you. We're all here to support you. And we're all here to show you that like, there is a light at the end of this tunnel. You will make it through. It'll be okay. Everything's gonna be just fine and you just have to keep saying that to yourself even in moments when you don't believe it because the rest of us believe it for you. So just keep faith in yourself, tell your story like Keely said, and you'll be okay. Yeah, something that was mentioned earlier was like, if this is your dream, then like you will get to that end goal of being a physician. And I think it's really helpful to like hold tight to that and just focus on that. And then like the application cycle is a means to getting to that point. But like worst case, it doesn't work out. That doesn't mean you're never going to be a doctor. You are good. If you want it, you, you can achieve your goals it's just a matter of like what that path is going to look like. So keeping, keeping that in mind, just um, believe in yourself and know that if you want this, then it is, it is totally possible for you and you will be an amazing doctor. 
Um, if this is helpful, um, I want to remind you that medicine is only one part of your interests. Uh, it's only one aspect of your identity. You have, you you are a, a wonderful um, three dimensional person. You have interests and and likes and dislikes and wants and needs and everything. So you know, don't lose yourself in the cycle. Um, take care of the other parts of yourself and nourish your other hobbies. If that's not helpful, then look, you've, you've buried yourself in the cycle. This You're going to make it through. It's going to happen. Um, and, you know, this is clearly a passion of yours, so it's going to work out. Um, and the last thing that I want to say is we've all been there um, none of us, you know, we're all here because we were stressed. So we want to tell you how not to do what we did. Um, so, you know, we, if you ever need somebody to chat with, you know, med mentors, peer advising, um, is, you know, a robust network of, of people who've done this before, who get it, um, who aren't going to tell you that it's wrong to be stressed because we've been there. Um, but we're also going to, you know, tell you how not to be because you don't deserve you don't deserve that. You deserve to be excited about this incredible journey, about this, um, you know, this passion that you have for helping others and for medicine. So um, if there's ever anything that, you know, we can do to talk through with you or to chat with you, just let us know because we get it. We're here and that's what we're here for. Yeah, everyone had wonderful comments. Um, I'll be brief with mine. <laughs> um, just make sure to believe in yourself, trust the process, find your village and keep them close to you and make sure to take it all in. Um, all of the processes you know, has a lot of emotions going on, just embrace it, take it head on um, and make sure to rely on the people around you that, that will get you through it. and. Um, and just kind of help you through the whole thing. Um, and we are some of those people, if you so choose. Um, we're all here for you if you want to reach out to us and just talk to us about anything. Um, like everyone said, we've all been through it in one way or another. So definitely feel free to reach out and we'd love to chat with you. And good luck. Thank you to everyone um, for being here and thank you to the panelists for such a wholesome, sweet panel. <laughs> This is really nice. Um, yeah, it's just like everyone said, good luck. Um, things will work out. Um, believe in yourselves <laughs> and just trust that you know you'll you'll get to where you need to be, um, and all your hard work will pay off. But yeah, so I think with that, I'm going to stop the recording if I can figure out how. Oh, here we go.